All right, today we're gonna tie something pretty different. Uh, something I just kind of kind of popped into my head here recently. Um, I'm on the road, so I only brought a few different materials. Um, it's gonna be another one of those swinging flies. Probably really good for for trout up in Alaska, but uh, also for your you know warm water species, bass, walleye, etc. Uh, without further ado, let's talk about what we have in the vise here on the uh, Umqua shank, the 25 millimeter Umqua Waddington shank. Also got the Senyo's intruder wire for hook size six or larger. Also got in the hook, the uh, owner, it's just a side drifting hook, a little bit thinner wire. Um, prefer an octopus hook, but these are what I just happen to have with me on the road here. I'm gonna start off with uh, my favorite underbody material some UV polar chenille and copper. Gonna hook, go ahead and tie that in here. And I'm gonna take my thread just behind the eyes here. Like I guess this would be a, a good swinging fly. Use a lot of two-handers. These are the flies that I love to tie. Like I said, I'm gonna wrap this material, this polar chenille, almost to the eyes here. A few more wraps. As you can see, I'm pulling back the fibers of this polar chenille as I tie forward. And that looks pretty good. I'll tie that off. Pulling all that material and <clears throat> next we'll tie in a little bit of extra select craft fur in black. It's a great, great material for swinging flies. I'm going to take, oh, it's about the width of a thicker pencil. What I'm going to do is cut that off really close to kind of the fake pelt there. And you see I've got quite a bit of material, some of it much longer than the rest. I'm going to try to pull out all the long fur and get rid of all that so I have a nice uniform length to my fly here. And I'm going to measure this out on the hook, or I'm sorry, on the, the uh, hook shank here. <clears throat> I'm going to have it go just a little bit further beyond that, just a little past that hook. And I'm gonna pull out just a little bit of under fur here, so just kind of pinch about where I'd like to tie this off. Pull out a little bit of under fur. Recheck here about my length. I'm gonna snip off a little bit of this for a good tie-in point here. And we'll go ahead and tie this right on top. I'll spin my bobbin a little bit so that when I come over the top, the thread doesn't have a tendency to twist. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap two wraps and let my bobbin hang there. I'm gonna start to kind of splay out these fibers with my thumb. You can see I'm kind of splaying them out and keep them kind of evenly distributed on the top of the fly. And sometimes if you have too much material towards the front of the fly, you can actually pull slightly and make it a little bit longer, but be careful not to pull out extra material. And we'll go ahead and lock that down. I like that look and about how much we've got on there. I'm actually gonna tie some more extra select craft fur in this olive color. We're gonna actually tie that on the underside of the fly here. So probably about three quarters as much of that material as we used in black, a little bit less. And because we have you know these dumbbell eyes our fly will tend to want to ride the correct way but if we had probably if we had too much material on the bottom it might want to spin or or uh, rotate on us so we'll get just a little bit less fur than our black here and we'll tie this on the bottom same thing we'll pull out some of these really really long fibers get those pulled out and we'll measure 
the underside here. I'm actually going to go slightly shorter than our fur that we put on top. So I'm going to measure that out on the top and then we'll kind of position it on the bottom. We'll pull out some of that under fur again just to make it a little less bulky. Remeasure again, cut off about where a little bit longer than our tie in point. And we'll go ahead and place that between these eyes here. And it's okay to have a little bit of material. You can see there I've got some excess material kind of poking out there. We'll actually end up covering this with some rabbit fur. We can splay that as well. Um, I like it a little bit more kind of condensed in the middle. And so you can see how that's starting to shape up. <clears throat> some longer hairs, we sh should be okay with that. Next I'm gonna take, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna take some barred speckled crazy legs and dark olive. We're gonna go ahead and put two of these in and we'll basically tie two in on one side and then we'll move our way to the other side. These I'm gonna make just slightly longer than our fur. And we'll, like I said, kind of hold that, pinch that right along the side a couple wraps to lock that in and then I like to just kind of pull these up over the top and we'll, a few wraps will kind of make them sit right along the side of the fly here. You can see what I'm doing, I'm kind of pulling my thread and locking it in right about where I'd like it and a few wraps to trap those legs in. And we use our <clears throat> trusty pipe cleaner here to trap all of this material because we are going to use a dubbing loop, one of my, another one of my favorite uh, tools or methods. We'll be using dubbing loops here. So we'll go ahead and get our dubbing loop set up. A couple wraps around the loop, then we'll make move our thread forward to about where we'll end up tying this off. We've got our dubbing tool here. Once again I'm going to split this thread and hook it on to our little material clip just so we have our loop open nicely for us. And for the head of this fly we're going to use some micro pulsator strips that we're going to end up cutting off of the the leather and then we'll spin that into a dubbing loop. <clears throat> you can see these aren't, this isn't the longest fur. So we'll kind of look for a section of this. Sometimes you have shorter fur. We'll look for a section that has slightly longer fur and looks like towards the bottom of this. We'll cut off about an inch and a half to two inches of this. And what I like to do before I put this into the loop is get it a little wet and move these hairs to kind of a perpendicular position. That'll make tying it into that loop a little bit easier. And sometimes, you know, you get your fur in this position and you look at it and you think, well, geez, that's probably not enough to cover the entire fly. So I meant, or the, the entire um, head of the fly. So I might actually cut a little bit longer piece and repeat that process. I can always use it for a smaller fly. Same thing, we'll get this wet, get this fur going perpendicular to that leather. And sometimes I'll have a nice little bowl of water next to me as I'm tying. In this case, I'm just using a little saliva. And now we'll grab our dubbing loop and we'll place this fur into that dubbing loop. And it doesn't matter how far right or left you're in the loop right now. The key is, is trying to cut off this leather as close to the, or cut off the fur as close to that leather as you can. This is the part where sometimes it, this can pull out, so you just have to take your time, cut it slowly. Then once you've got that piece of leather cut off, you can go ahead and mess with your fur in your loop, kind of pulling it where you'd like it. One thing I really like doing, you see it's kind of bunched up in there, some thicker you know, some hairs kind of piled on top of each other. So I'll actually pull, you know, make this 
dubbing loop longer, I'll actually move some fur from the top of that loop down and just kind of keep lengthening this loop or how much fur is in our loop. <clears throat> and you can see it's getting longer. We have a lot more coverage and I'll just keep doing that until I like until I like how it is. And now you can see that we've got some excess you know where there's too much too long of butts. So we're going to pull the tips of this fur to have is you know about a eighth of an inch of overhang with the butts and then we'll go ahead and pinch and spin once we feel tension on our fingers we'll let that spin and once we've got it to where we like it we'll take our dubbing brush brush that out starts off pretty pretty light and then you can dig in there just a little bit we are using some pretty thin uni thread here some six aught so just be careful about getting too crazy with your with your tool and here you can wet this fur and I like to go a couple wraps, two to three wraps behind these eyes, get as much coverage back there as we can with those rubber legs and how thick the, the uh, craft fur is. Sometimes it gets a little bulky there. Our next move will be to go under that left eye and then we'll go back between the eyes here and to where we're going to actually go behind and under that right eye and that will bring our thread forward and now we'll just wrap forward fairly tight wraps here to where we tied off our thread and I like a couple extra wraps of my the thread that's the dubbing loop <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and tie that dubbing loop off once again I like to tie a few forward and then I'll grab that dubbing loop and pull back and wrap my thread right up over the top of that sometimes slightly over the top of that fur and that just helps lock in that dubbing loop now we'll take our whip finishing tool finish this off I'll wet this fur to pull it back so I don't get anything trapped in this whip finish a couple whip finishes of two three four wraps two three four there's one whip finish and we'll do one more for good measure and you can use <clears throat> any kind of glue you like here. I like the Sally Hansen hard as nails. Makes it a nice durable finish. And I will just pull off our pipe cleaner. You can see we have a completed fly here, but we still have pretty long rubber legs. So I'm going to go ahead and you know, kind of measure those rubber legs. I like to cut them different lengths. And so we'll just snip off a little bit you know we'll have them still fairly long we want them to provide some good action in that fly and then the next thing I'll do is I grab this hook move all this material forward and I really like to comb this thoroughly that'll help bring some of those materials to life get some of the trapped materials free especially the head materials that might get trapped when you're tying forward We'll just get all that nice and cleaned up. And then I'll show you the completed fly. Like I said, this is just kind of a fly that came to me here as I was thinking about something I should tie. Just happen to have you know, some of these materials as I'm traveling. And I feel like that's going to be an awesome fly for you know swinging for, for trout and uh, a lot of other you know species, certainly bass. Uh, walleye, etc. I think this would be a really awesome fly for you. Super simple, uh, just a few materials, and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much for watching.